Raycasting is a technique that data packs can use to trace a line through the world and see if it hits any blocks or mobs. For example, my God Mode data pack uses Raycasts to fire spells, and the data pack where it takes two players to mine every block uses them to detect which block the players are looking at. This is a feature that game engines typically offer out of the box, but in Minecraft, we have to get a little creative. Typically, a raycast works by spawning an invisible entity at the player's position and moving it in small steps until we detect that it has hit an obstacle. The step size is an important consideration here. Too small and the raycast becomes computationally expensive, but too big and it could skip over the corners of blocks. So, now that we've covered the basics, I'm just going to go over a little example. I'm going to try and keep it brief, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line in the comments. And I'll also make sure that I put a download link in the description so that you can use this as a template for your own projects if you want to. Now, if you're not sure how to get started with a data pack, I do have a separate tutorial on that, so feel free to check that out. And that will just get you set up with all the necessary files and directories that you need. But very simply, what this is going to do is it's going to call this tick player function on every player, which is going to cast a ray. So this is our raycast function, and all this is going to do is summon a ray, which in this case is an area effect cloud. This is just an entity that we can move around the world. It could be anything. And we position the ray at the caster's eyes, copy their facing, and then we move the ray. So. This is just grabbing the ray that we've just created and calling a function on that ray, which in this case is process. Here we're referring to a scoreboard called steps, which I've created in the load function. This value here represents the number of steps that the ray will move. The ray can't move forever. At some point, you just have to assume it's not going to hit anything. For example, if you fire a ray straight up. So this value effectively determines how far the ray is going to move, depending also on the step size, which we'll come on to later. Next up, we move the ray, and this is actually a recursive function, so it's a function that's going to call itself repeatedly to move the ray step by step, and then if the ray hit a creeper, so this is a tag that's going to get set by the move function, then we call our ray hit function, and finally we destroy the ray when it's no longer needed. So, let's take a look at our move function then. All this is going to do is move the ray forward according to some step size which I've set to half a block and this is just a little test. If you want to visualize the ray you can uncomment this line and I'll show you what that looks like. Reload our data pack. Now you can actually see where the ray is going. So we've moved the ray half a block forwards. We then need to check for collisions with creepers and blocks at the new location. And if we encounter either a creeper or a block, we add a tag. We decrease the number of steps remaining. And finally, this is the recursive part of the function. So we're gonna call the function again, as long as we've not hit a creeper, we've not hit a block, and we still have at least one step to travel. And just to point out a couple of things about the collision detection, here we're checking for creepers within a 1.5 block radius, and that's just to give a little bit of tolerance. And when we're checking for collisions with blocks, we actually use a tag called ray permeable. Now, a tag is literally just a list of blocks, and in this case, it's defining all the blocks that the ray is allowed to pass through. So that's down here, ray permeable. So anything that's, you know, like a plant or air or tripwire, we don't want those blocks to stop the ray. So that is literally it. We're casting a ray from the player, we're moving it forward half a block at a time until we've moved it 64 times. And that's it, and if we've hit a creeper, that's when we call this hit function. So this is where we can now do the fun stuff. So rather than just say hit, let's add an effect to the creeper. So effect, give. Um, now this function's being run on the ray entity itself but we want to give an effect to the creeper that the ray has collided with. So to do that, we're just gonna look for the nearest creeper to the ray. Let's go for slowness, one second, and we'll set the last parameter to true to hide particles. So let's try this out. I'm in survival mode right now, but as long as I'm looking at this creeper, he's not gonna move. 
If I look away, after one second, the slowness runs out and he'll start coming towards me. So that there is a very simple data pack that uses Arraycast. Quilby, Quilby, best channel on the interwebs. Quilby, Quilby, hit like and subscribe and the notification bell. Don't want to miss any more fun times like this. Quilby!